Hi, I'm Ashley. And I'm Bree. We're the PR team behind the theater downstream. For our sixth season, we wanted to get to know the people behind the characters. We wanted to get real. This week, we continue our Sound of Music conversations by interviewing Robin Nation, the actress who plays the Mother Abbess. Robin humbly discusses her fascinating life, traveling to Japan in a bluegrass band, singing in front of a crowd of thousands, her husband Scott writing and selling a jingle to Purnell Sausage, being a master gardener, and why theater is a way for her to spend time with her very creative family. She also has some touching thoughts about what it's like to start an endeavor, only to have it taken away. Robin certainly lived up to her role as the mother abbess, and was as warm and inviting as I expected her to be. Well, welcome to Getting Real. Can you tell me what your name is and what character you play? I'm Robin Nation, and my character is Mother Abbess. And I know you told me that you are retired, but what was your day job before you retired? I was a network analyst for the Commonwealth of Kentucky, and then I worked for Pomeroy IT Solutions as a network analyst. Can you tell me what that means? I worked on a lot of computer problems with networks and um, password issues. and So kind of like tech support? Tech support, exactly. Did you like it? I, I really liked it. I was able to move up really quickly, and um, I made a really good salary, and mm-hmm. I was happy with there. How long were you there? I was with the Commonwealth for 25 years and then four years with Pomeroy. After I retired from the state, I started working with Pomeroy. And do you have any fun work stories from your time there? Oh, I do have one. My son, when he was about three to four years old, I took him to work with me. We, at the time, had a big net mainframe. Mm-hmm. And I was talking to a customer on the phone, and I looked around, and he wasn't there. And I went back, and he was getting ready to turn the mainframe <gasps> off. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> What I told would him, that have done if he had done that? I would have taken the whole the state down. Oh, my goodness. The county clerk's offices and various things. It would have been a tr- catastrophe. Oh, thank goodness you caught him. Yeah. Do you do you hold that over his head now? Not really. Okay. Um, <laughs> he, he didn't. He just wanted to push a button. Yeah. So what did you want to be when you were growing up? I didn't really have any aspirations per se. I just wanted to go to school and uh, I loved, I liked going to school and I wanted to go to college. And mm-hmm. Well, tell me a little bit about your family. i uh, married to Brian Scott Nation. We met in uh, a little town called Mount Eden. We just started going together and uh, then uh, we got married. Mm-hmm. I was going to school and he was going to school. We ended up having two children, mm-hmm. Stephanie, and then I have a son named Daniel. And Steph is in the show with you. Stephanie's in the show with me, and my son is also an actor. He Right now he works for the state of the Commonwealth, mm-hmm. and he is a theater director at Western Hills High School. Oh, I didn't know that. When did he yeah. start doing that? He started doing that, well, he just started okay. in the last few months. He He's going to be a artist in residence. Does he like it? He loves it. Oh, good, good. And your granddaughter, Lizzie, was actually Dorothy for us last summer in The Wizard of Oz. Oh, yeah. That's her passion. Yeah. So you're the, I guess, the first generation, but third generation to join us. Right. So we started with your granddaughter. Then this show, we brought on mom and grandma. Yeah. Actually, she begged me to be in the show. Oh, and she did? Yes. And I, I was just going to be happy. I just wanted to be just a nun. And I thought we could be the three nuns. Yeah. <laughs> we would just take pictures and do stuff together. And... Uh, she uh, begged me to do it. so I'm I thought, so glad she did. Yeah. I didn't have any idea who I was going to try out for. And, in fact, when I came, I was so in- intimidated by all the little ones that got up there, and they had their song, and it was memorized. And, yeah. And I was like, I had to look at my paper, and I thought, <laughs> oh, my gosh, I'm, this is horrible. <laughs> and I've sang for years, but I didn't have any Broadway songs or anything. So So where did you sing before? you? I sang in a bluegrass band for 13 years, and we traveled around all over the United States, and then we even went to Japan. Oh, wow. And we made uh, three albums. When did you go to Japan? It was like in the 90s. We um, stayed there two weeks and toured. Japan and went on the bullet train and went from one end of Japan to the other. Oh, wow. And we were there before, you know, the tsunami. So we, oh. everything's totally different there, I assume now. Mm-hmm. But Were you there the same year as the tsunami, but just before? Or no, before? it was, so the tsunami was only like a couple years ago, maybe three years ago. But it totally destroyed a lot of the towns that we went, we stayed at. We did a Japanese-American exchange. We went to represent Kentucky and, you know, well, United States, I guess. And we went with Homer Ledford and some other people, uh, Berea dancers. 
and uh, we just went to different sit- major cities in Japan. We did a concert. We were in big concert halls. Now, who did this with you? My husband, and then my, we had a, our band, Kentucky Blue. Mm-hmm. We, so was it? The, it was the two of you plus who else was in the band? Uh, Lori Cottrell and David Cottrell. And they're from Simpsonville. Okay. And then there was Martin Harley. Okay. He was he was in the group. So we we had been together for like. 11 years when we got selected so we had them we had been traveling around going you we usually played on the weekends and we had a bus and everything and cds and we played with allison krauss before so we we got to where we were doing really well but then Mm -hmm. later on we got a lot of family commitments and we we had an exchange student live with us from italy and so we just uh, decided not to continue in the group and then we started our own family group where stephanie plays the bass and then okay her husband played a snare drum. Okay. And then my son, Daniel, plays the violin. Yeah, he's really good at that. And, uh, yeah, he started when he was around five. Now, so. did he did he start playing the violin because he always wanted to, or you guys just kind of gave it to him and he picked it up? Well, we wanted him to, and mm-hmm. he started, he played the Suzuki method. What's and that? And that is a method it, that was started in Japan, mm-hmm. and uh, it's to teach small children. They, they learn to play by ear, mm-hmm. then they start playing by note. And he, he stayed with it till he was up in high school. He was in the, the Louisville Youth Orchestra for a while, mm-hmm. and it really taught him how to play by ear plus to play by note oh, that's but he tended to go toward the ear method just a little bit more so than the note but he didn't go on after the Louisville Youth Orchestra he he wanted to be an actor and so he went to school to be an actor and he did do that for a while but then he decided to get married and he decided that at that point he's gonna have to get a real job <laughs> <laughs> that always happens All right well do you have any hobbies or hidden talents besides theater um really i love gardening i'm mm-hmm. a master gardener oh, from what does that Shelby mean? county well you go to some classes at the extension office mm-hmm. and you do volunteer hours and you had to take a test and it was pretty intensive i enjoyed it and i'm what not really it? getting to participate in it as much since i have babysit my little granddaughter Adler. what does it mean to be a master gardener what it means it? that you know about everything about the gardening aspect all the way from how to Uh, grow a seed all the way up to how to plant trees or how to plant uh, any type of annual or perennial and uh, you can take care of plants and you know what to do to to keep your plants alive. Does that include landscaping? Landscaping, you learn about landscaping, how to trim shrubs, trees, just anything about plants. And that's what always been my passion, mm-hmm. and I think I inherited that from my mom. But yeah, it's I still I I have landscaped my home, and I'm still working on it right now. But it's just something you never outgrow. It just gets stronger and stronger as you get into it a lot more. So it does require. I mean, people find out you're master gardener they want you to come landscape for them for free, basically. Oh, <laughs> but, that's, uh, well, that's the way with anything, isn't it? Though. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice hobby, and it gives you a lot of exercise, too, so I enjoy it. Well, that's good. It's good to have a hobby that you really enjoy. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to transition into a little bit of theater basics. So what is your acting origin story? How did you get into specifically acting? You said you were singing a lot, but what Mm -hmm. made you do the transition to acting? Uh, Basically, my kids getting into different roles as, Mm -hmm. as in the different age groups that they've been in, I've tried out for plays that they've been in and and usually a lot of times when I would try out I would get a part and I would be I would really be surprised that they would pick me but um, you have a wonderful voice you have a wonderful speaking voice it's usually musicals yeah Um, Daniel was really into musicals and we one of our big plays that we were in was um was Fiddler on the Roof oh we enjoyed that a lot where were you guys in that our whole family was in it it was in the 90s what part were you in that I was Fruma Sarah Sarah, which one's she's, that? she's the a, ghost. She's the ghost. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That was my big role there. <laughs> they had it fixed up pretty funny. I was up on top of a big um, lifeguard stand, and they had this dress that they made to go over this life. Oh, so you would look so huge. tall. Yeah. Oh. And then they had this big wig on me, and I had when I started singing. I had these big pearls that I had to wear. Of course, in the line, she talked about her pearls. Mm -hmm. And one time, you know, I 
brought my head back and I didn't have my wig on really good and it flew off. <laughs> oh no. And that was like a funny story, I guess. Was uh, that it during a performance? Yes, it was oh, during no. a performance. Oh no, what'd you do? Kentucky, I just went on. I didn't, <laughs> I tried not to let it bother me. I thought, well, I put my hand up and kind of caught it, but it, you know, it was very obvious that it was flying off. <laughs> I enjoyed that really well. My son was the fiddler and then oh. all whole family was in it. Stephanie was in it and not Leslie, she wasn't born yet, but yeah. Uh, Scott was in it, and he was... He, and then we started doing other plays, and Scott got in uh, some of the plays, too, and he got to be Big Julie in... Um, what was the name of that show? Um, Guys, Guys and Dolls. Dolls. Okay, okay. And I was the uh, general that came and was over the Salvation Army. Okay, I could see that. Yeah. Definitely. What other, what other roles have you had? Uh, that's about the biggest roles. I was offered a, a part at uh, in another play, and then I was going to be a French maid. Ooh. But... Uh, I decided not to do that. What play was it? I'm not sure. What, it was a play. I'm not sure what the name of the play was. It's, it was that's been a good while about, back. It's been in when my son was in high school. But okay. we were big in the drama club there, and we started a drama club, and we were constantly working with that because the school didn't give very much money to the arts at the mm-hmm. time. Was this and with Frankfurt? This was Western Hills, Western where Hills. Scott Daniel's at right now. Okay. They still don't have a drama teacher there. Uh, they had a prominent drama teacher there when my daughter was in school, and she was in all their plays. And mm-hmm. and then when she decided to be a teacher, her teacher was a kind of mentor to her, and she went to Georgetown, and, and then Daniel started going to school there. And he, he, he was all about the theater and all about, and he played in the band, and he was selected to go to Europe and play oh, wow. and sing. And he, oh, he it's a shame a, he gave up the violin. He's then. a tremendous singer. He's got a really, he's got a great voice. He should try out for some of our stuff. I know. Then. He'd like to, I'm sure, but. Just family stuff right now? Yeah. He's got two little ones. Uh, he's got a six-year-old and a two-year-old. Yeah. So he And then he has a full-time job, and then he's trying to do this. That's a artist lot. in residence. That's I tried to get him to get his teaching certificate when he was in school, but he would have no part of it because <laughs> he was going to be an actor. Mm-hmm. And then later I said, well, are you going to move to New York or to Chicago? Or No, I don't want to move either. I said, well, you are you have to. I if mean, you're going to be an actor, yeah. Yeah, you have to. He, he didn't want to. So he just decided that he'd better just get a job then and and move on with it there but he he's got his own um show on youtube called mulegit nation oh yes i have to i need to watch that yeah. i think he sent that to me before uh, he's I need to watch it. he's pretty crazy character <laughs> and he he goes all over the place and goes to the promote that and does he ever go to the stuff with Sven Gulli? yeah he that's basically it's a similar setup to that scott has also um been in in the show since it started and we film it down in our basement we have a big basement and okay we've got a big uh we used to have a tv i'm on hosanna house that was on youtube and then we did it at a church mm-hmm. and we had a big theater there and every month we had a big production and that's where lizzie actually started doing her acting okay i had a character called mrs f which she was basically the an older lady that what it was is she was uh, her and her husband started this ministry and they had kids to come and stay there and they taught him about things and every week was a certain was a problem you know that they had to come through and Scott actually wrote all the scripts oh, wow. in there. He's a really good writer, Scott. He You have a very artistic and talented family. <laughs> he wrote a lot of the songs that we sang when we played in uh, Kentucky Blue. He wrote a commercial for Purnell's Au Foch Sausage, mm-hmm. and they play that on the old Grand Ole Opry, uh, and we recorded it down in Louisville at a, at a studio down there and got a lot of publicity about that but uh, we sold it to him and then he used it for many years for his commercials that's really cool yeah we enjoyed that it was fun well do you have a dream show or a a dream role that you would really like to do oh mother abbas is my dream role (laughs) well you are doing it (laughs) i have really never considered myself being an actress that much i mean i have been doing a lot of acting but I've i've never considered myself per se an actress more so a singer Mm -hmm. than you're a singer who acts rather than an actor who sings right i think that's the way it is so what what is your method for memorizing lines do you have a one that helps you the best well what i 
that basically what I do, I just read over it and over it. And then at night and before I go to bed, I try to say all my lines. And then I usually, there's usually a couple lines that give me a lot of trouble. And then I have to go back and just, you know, burn, burn myself up worth it trying to get them those lines and usually I don't succeed but is it is it the way the lines are written sometimes or what makes it, it seems like there's a repetition of some lines that say one thing and then the next line will be it'll be the same thing but it'll be a little uh, yeah change. rephrased a little differently mm-hmm. I've, I've heard of that too where yeah there'll be lines that are very similar or you'll have scenes that are similar and you're, mm-hmm. you get confused on which one you're in yeah I do that a lot <laughs> yeah. uh, and to be honest the la- the worst one that gets me is when I have to s- say the memory verse type thing well the one at the end the right before the song and mm-hmm. i don't know why that's giving me so much trouble but i guess i just focus on it that i'm every time i think i know which lines i'm having trouble with and maybe sometimes i might even give myself a, a phobia about those lines and i i think oh i don't know these lines and yeah. i'll be standing there yeah. and i'll recite the line and then i'll go out there and mess it up so yeah i've done that i i kind of took a hiatus from singing because i psyched myself up psyched myself out about singing i mm. forgot lyrics one time on stage yeah. and then it became this seed that was planted and i thought yeah. oh no i'm gonna forget lyrics so it didn't happen every time but it would mm. happen randomly enough that yeah. it made it scares me you. really scared mm-hmm. and i kind of said well i need to take a step back from doing this because yeah. if this is something that's going to keep happening then i need to yeah take a break. i'm only had i've sang this one song for about 20 years and i've had various times when i've when we get up to sing, actually perform, and I would be, I couldn't remember the words. What song? Wayfair and Stranger. Mm-hmm. And I know that song, like, back and forth. And, I mean, it just, sometimes I think, it's depending on your how much rest you get. And, yeah, yeah. And things that makes you think, you know, you get up there and your mind goes blank. Yeah. And it's a terrible feeling. It really is. It's it, You just feel your blood go cold. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I haven't had too many times like that. I usually, when I learn a song, I pretty much can do it pretty well. I don't get nervous that much oh, that's when I good. sing. That doesn't bother me at all. It's it's the acting is seem is really not giving me too much of a stress right now. But I don't know how it'll be when everybody gets out there. But mm-hmm. what is your actual vocal range? Well, I can sing high soprano all the way down to tenor. Oh, bass. nice. You know, and not bass, but tenor. And I can do baritone. Okay. I have a large range because I started singing with men. So mm-hmm. I had to sing harmony with them. And I'm always saying high. But my high range is not as, it used to be higher. I don't know what happened, but. Well, I think it's pretty high now, so yeah. I don't know what higher would be. Uh, and, well, I used to be able to sing higher without any effort. Oh, okay. But now it seems as though I have a little bit of trouble with the high end. But I think it's only because I, ha- I don't sing. I used to sing the Messiah and various things like that. So I can sing any style of music. I'm not, whenever we go out and play bluegrass, I, you know, it's a totally different venue. But mm-hmm. we, for the most part, we, we sang a, like contemporary bluegrass not the old old bluegrass and i can sing that and i can sing classical and then we always do christmas musicals and stuff and christmas cantatas and i don't have any problem switching over to the i'm not stuck on pacific style Mm -hmm. i enjoy singing all styles really i like to have the chance to sing various things and get the opportunity to you know make a voice you know stronger in all the areas that i want to sing I think it's an incredible, you have an incredible voice. I, I really love that. listening to it. It gives me goosebumps every time. Thank you. Every time. I'm enjoying it. I didn't think, I didn't, I dream I would get as good a part as this. And I appreciate everybody giving me a chance to do this because I really want to do well. And if I can just get past a couple lines I'm having trouble with, I think I'll be set. <laughs> yeah, I think you will too. Do you have anyone that you look up to as a as a, another singer? I really admire Emmy Lou Harris. She's like the one person that I would love to sing her songs and just pursue a career like hers. I have mean, you ever met her? I've been to a couple of her concerts, but as far as going up to her meeting her, no. Okay. <laughs> No, I haven't. I'd love to. So you, we talked a little bit about this already, but do you have a method for combating any kind of stage nerves? You said you don't get nervous when you sing, usually. Yeah. So do you get nervous when you're acting, and how do you handle that? Well, when I get, I get really get nervous as I first start to go out, and I just have to. Fo- I try to focus on the people that I'm with. I try to connect with them, and get to know them, and so I can feed off them, and they can feed off me. 
And once I do that, I don't feel any nervousness at all. But it's just when I go out and I don't connect with them, I feel like I, I have to connect with them in order to be able to do my part well. How do you connect with them? What do you do? Well, I touch them oh, or, okay. or, you know, even look at them in the eye. Mm -hmm. Maybe, you know, I know Maria, I'm really getting close to her. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm, I'm just trying to be a mother figure to her and I think right it's now. really coming across that's what I'm trying to focus on with Mother Abbess I feel like she is just the mother to all the nuns mm -hmm. and that she wants all of them to be successful and she wants to know, get to know them so she can understand where they're coming from and I want to get to know them all of them too so yeah. I'm enjoying everybody in the in the cast and there's a lot of really nice people in the cast I feel there like there is and they they are very complimentary to me and I appreciate that and I I am really impressed with how they connect to each other and uh, you know they're just so kind to each other mm -hmm. and I hope that I'm being that with them but you are I know you are <laughs> I'm trying to what are excuse me why do you think that theater is important it's it's been tremendously important in our family because we use that a lot to be together and do things in common. We're just not the kind of parents to just go and drop your kids off and 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 then come back and pick them up. Mm -hmm. We usually stay and help, try to help out in any way any of our kids and what they're doing. And Stephanie actually started her Hosanna House and she was the director and she uh, was the co-host and she got everybody together and she is she has a tremendous way with people and she can connect with people so much she started us all doing that and Scott start writing and we it, we just it was just a a magical time during that time that we were able to do that and it was a good ministry mm -hmm. and we also the kids in the youth group in the middle school group would be actors in it and they grew up in Hosanna House and we got to know them and it was the outreach per se and we started out in the basement you know in the kitchen behind the kitchen and just wherever you could find somewhere yeah, and then they actually built a theater which is still there and we had some, a set designer come in and build us a set and Daniel designed the set and that's great and it, it was fun and we had a good time with it but and it was, why did all that come to an end we it came to an end because there was a different aspect as to in the church as to how it, they wanted it done oh. and we didn't agree so it was kind of like a divorce oh, it was kind of bad but we're we're still trying to get over it it was it hurt us all but and it was your it was your idea right it was, yeah it was our baby basically and so it's kind of like somebody told you how to raise your own kid right yeah mm -hmm. and and it happens sometimes in the churches and our, I, that actually happened in our band i mean it, we had a divorce per se but it hurts you when you build something from the very beginning yeah and then something comes in or somebody comes in and they they want to be a part of it mm -hmm. but they end up tearing it up is basically what happens it's tough yeah it's tough it's a rough it's a rough uh, time it was really hard on stephanie and that's one of the reasons why we started lizzie wanted us to come over here and be in this play together mm -hmm. i think because she missed it so much yeah and um, she loves being in any, any play mm -hmm. so uh, i told her i said just go and and do anything that they want you to do and just try to do the best that you can and so she's been doing that and so i think it's helping her to heal some wounds and mm -hmm. hopefully she'll come out a better actress yeah i think i'm glad that we could be here for you all then yeah that's a good thing yeah it's a good thing if you could wave a magic wand and change any one thing about the theater industry, is there anything that you would change? I would want to change the way that people who are actually outside people mm -hmm. on how they would come and connect with you and not really give you all the support that you need, but even your family members. I mean, if they could just acknowledge that that's a part of your life or or that theater is a part of everybody's existence, that they can give it support whether it's monetary or whether it's uh, just a pat on the back. Mm -hmm. That's what I would like to see happen. You know, where people around you, if you have a passion for anything, that mm -hmm. they would give you encouragement mm -hmm. and uh, that you wouldn't think you're out there all, all on your own because you can't do anything like that on your own. Theater needs to have the audience, and yeah. the audience is what keeps the theater going. Right, so right. to be an audience member is very important. It is. That's a really that's a really interesting perspective. 
I like that. Now we're going to kind of transition into some Sound of Music specific questions. So my first one is, why did you want to be a part of this production? It sounds like to me it's going to be a combination of a dream role and also a granddaughter is why. Right, exactly. Uh, initially, I never thought at, at all about being Mother Abbess. I, I, I didn't even know that I was going to try out for Mother Abbess. I mm -hmm. just knew that that was about the only thing other than being the, uh, being the maid could be appropriate for my age. But when Lizzie, she just begged me and begged mm -hmm. me to come and try out, I thought, well, you know, I've got to try out because she wants me to do it so much. And so that was the main thing is to be, to, be with her and be with Stephanie. I missed that because mm -hmm. we had been doing that a lot. Mm -hmm. And after I sang the song... Uh, climb every mountain yeah i knew that i really wanted to play the part yeah that's after we you know we were doing the audition and 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 i thought oh my that, that is the that's a great song and i'd like to sing it so yeah. after i got in there i thought well hopefully i'll get it i i felt bad for the other people that didn't that tried out because i know there's a lot of them that were good i just i wanted them to do well too so mm -hmm. i would have been okay if somebody else had gotten the part yeah that's won. the that's the worst part about auditions they're fun but they're also sad because of the people and mm -hmm. and sometimes you're able I, I can say that we were actually able to with this show cast every single adult that tried out who wrote down that they would take any role now there were some adults that tried out that said i want x x part or nothing which we understand it's not mm -hmm. it's not necessarily a a diva thing it's just a timing you know hey if i'm gonna do this i just want that so we gotta respect exactly. that but we were able i'm really happy that we were able to cast every adult that tried that's out that's great what do you feel like has been the most intimidating part of bringing this iconic movie musical to the stage or being cast as Mother Abbess with this iconic song? Has there been any intimidation for you? Not really, other than that there's a couple lines that um, I feel like I should deliver in a certain way, and I just some seem to be able to get it Have right you watched now. the movie to see how she does it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is a funny story. My granddaughter's too. And she can sing every song in The Sound of Music. Mm -hmm. And she, every day, she wants to put on a really frilly dress. Mm -hmm. And she wants us to play, she calls it My Girl's Movie, which is The Sound of Music. Uh -huh. And she loves all the little girls. And she dances. And, and she has her frilly dress on. And, she, and when we're in the car, we listen to The Sound of Music uh, DVD. An ECD, and she knows all the. She knows She's got to be so excited to come see this thing. <laughs> yeah, she. And we we just laugh when she's in the back seat, and she's just singing to her little heart out. And actually, our grandson knows a lot of the songs too, because we listen to it every time we get in the car. Well, I. It sounds like to me you're gonna have another generation on the stage pretty soon. I think so. They, <laughs> especially if she loves to dance and sing. <laughs> So what are you looking forward to the most about being able to play this character? Is it the song? I'm looking forward to doing my lines well. And then I'm, I'm looking forward to singing with Maria mm -hmm. um, and singing the song with her. And I'm hoping that we will be able to pull off uh, showing how much it actually did. It pushed her right into going on back and uh, getting back with Captain Von Trapp. Mr. And, Von Trapp. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping that's going to come across well and that I'll be able to hone in on the, the way the song needs to be interpreted during that time and, and just show that it's not just a song. It's just her telling her what she needs to do. It's more like advice set the to advice. music. Yeah. What is your method for getting in the same frame of mind as your character? I just try to think about well, how would your you know, my, I, how would I, what would I do if this was my daughter? And how would I want her to be treated by somebody, you mm -hmm. know, in that type of... Because Mother Abbas had a lot of clout. And yes. she was the top person. And so she could have come across a lot meaner. And, and I would, if I had a daughter, I would want Mother Abbas to be kind and, and to nurture Maria and to point her in the right direction. And that's what I want to do, and that's what I want to come across when I do this part. I hopefully can do that. <laughs> yeah, I think that's really good to just treat it actually like a mother character. It was. And I mean, she was the mother yeah. abbess. <laughs> yes, yes. What do you love about the mother abbess? Well, she has a little bit of humor, and I'm not real, I, I'm not real good at humor sometimes. I feel like I go over it. I don't like to, and I like the one part where in, you're talking about Captain Von Trapp and how he 
you know, he's like a dream boat. You yeah. Know? And I wanted to come across like Heroism that. in the Adriatic, yeah. that line. Where she's I like, love that line. The captain. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I wanted to come across like that and get her, give her a little different aspect as yeah. a character, you yeah. know, instead of just trying to be mother or mother all the time. <laughs> so what's the hardest part to identify with, with the mother abbots? Because it sounds like the easiest part is to identify with the mother part mm-hmm. of it. So is there anything difficult for you? The most thing is difficult is those lines that are similar but they are the same Mm -hmm. and try to I'm trying to know the part of Maria what she says Mm -hmm. yeah that's good and then I try to play off what she says so it makes me have a correlation between the two lines so I'm desperately trying to get that in act one in scene uh, 13 I think it is Mm -hmm. and that's the, the main part that I'm trying to work on right now is to get those correlations together. How do you think that you would have felt about Maria if it was you? If Robin met Maria, how do you think you would feel about her? Uh, I would probably be, I'd probably be annoyed at some of the times of the way she doesn't take it seriously. And, but I would kind of find out, I would, I would hope I would try to find out what's the real reason why you're doing this. And I think she explains herself when she talks about how she looked over at the Abbey. Yeah. And she just, she wanted to be a part of something. And she just picked, she, she just wasn't sure how to do She didn't have it. her family. Yeah. And she didn't have, she wasn't a part of anything. Mm-hmm. And she saw them as a, as a family unit and she wanted to be a part of it. And I would like to see Maria is that she was able to find that family that she really needed. Mm-hmm. And that I, Mother Abbas was able to point her toward it. And I'm hoping that... I'll be able to pull that off. I think you will. Do you have a favorite song from The Sound of Music? I like the, we. well, I listen to all the songs, uh, you know, on the DVD. And I, I like I like the song that I'm doing, Climb Every Mountain, but I like the song I do with Maria. Favorite things? Raindrops and Roses? Oh, my favorite things, yeah. I love that I love that song. And me and my little granddaughter sing it all the time in the car. I get a little tongue-tied sometimes on some of the verses, but for the most part, I think that's... One of my favorite songs. I like all the all the songs that Maria sings, and I think she's doing a great job doing all those songs. And I'm hoping that when I do it with her, I can come across what I'm supposed to do in that mm-hmm. song because I know I'm supposed to pretend that I used to sing the song, and I, you know, it's going to be hard to have that come across correctly. I hope I can do that. Do you have a favorite rehearsal moment so far? I enjoyed the last couple times we were doing the Act One. I was singing the song with her, and I feel like. Um, I connected with her on the end when she uh, takes off her hat and she's finally going to be not going to be a postulate anymore. Yeah. And she's going to be, she's going to go for her dream. I, I had a, that was a good moment right there. Oh, and I like singing with the other nuns, the mornings, those, uh, La Alleluia. Yeah. It's so beautiful. Confidant and... I enjoy those songs really well. Your voices just fill the auditorium. It's going to be so beautiful for the audience to hear. I'm hoping everything will turn out great. How do you think our version of the production is bringing something new to the story? It seems like we're going to do a lot bigger version of that, and Mm -hmm. it's going to be more... I like the scenery and the way that you're doing that. The projection, you mean? The projection and where it just broadens the stage to where you really feel like you're there. And I can't wait to see, you know, how it's all going to turn out as far as that goes. Why do you think that people should come see The Sound of Music? I think they should come to see it to see how well that we're putting it all together. And what a short time, really. I mean, it it seems like it just flew by. It has. And how we can get it pulled together this quickly. I was surprised every week, you know, how, how well it's going. I mean, I knew it would be fast, but I had no idea it would just fly by like it does this. you feel like it, it when you first start into it you feel there the time stretches so far ahead of you but as you keep going it just it not only i mean of course you are advancing in time but it just feels like oh my goodness this is flying by it's exactly and this last few weeks are really pushing through and i've got to really concentrate on my you know sometimes i sit there and think well i should be doing this and that mm-hmm. and then i'll Oh, I know what I should be doing. (laughs) Doing my lines. Doing my lines. (laughs) Okay, well now I'm going to ask you some what's called rapid fire questions. So you just tell me the first thing that comes into your mind. Okay. If you could choose the next theater downstream show, what would it be? 
Fiddler on the Roof would be good. I was going to say, would you want to do Fiddler again? Yeah. yeah, I would. What kind of roles do you prefer? Um, I like uh, the roles where you can you can broaden your character up away from your own per- personality, but yet kind of is your personality. Mm-hmm. And I like to find one that you know fits my personality mm-hmm. for the most part. <laughs> Tell me about a time when you had a really bad day but had to perform that night, and how did you get through it? It can be from theater or it can oh. be from one of your concerts. Well, we used to go out and play in bluegrass, and we would get in an argument or, or disagreement about various things, and we had to still get out there and perform. Is this you and, you and Scott or no, you and your other band our members? our other band. Okay. We would be, we'd have a disagreement, and then we'd have to get out there, and we would have to pretend that everything was okay. Yeah. Because we ended up having to go and sit at our table and booth and a lot of people would come up and talk to us so we had to be civil to each other and yeah. it was very hard okay when you get to have a group like that you get so close mm-hmm. that you are just too close sometimes okay and being living together and live spending all your whole every weekend together and practicing during the week we just got really tight but yet we got thinking about ourselves more than and we started doing that it started folding Mm. and um, instead of thinking of the group as a whole yeah that's when it started when we thought when we first started we just thought about the group or how we could get our group Mm -hmm. going and Mm -hmm. it wasn't about our own self it was more or less about the whole group then once we started thinking about ourselves and how we could you know we wanted to be the big the the, the main person Mm -hmm. and when we did start doing that, it just started going down destruction. And I think it happens in theater, too. I mean, you have to think of it as a whole group of people trying to put forth this big production, but you're working together. Right, as a team. Yeah, and you can't come out as a prima donna. Right. Because it'll show. Right, right. So that would that be your advice to anyone starting a new venture with mm-hmm. another person is to keep your focus on the project and not yourself exactly mm-hmm. it that will be the the crowning moment when you as a group of people can pull out what you want it to be like as a whole mm-hmm. and it won't be um I, the star you're the star you're the main person you do you're doing it all you're keeping the show together it's when the everybody every single person gets out there and they do their best and then you can say that you all work together as a as a group and then i think at the end you'll miss each other yeah and you'll want to be you will want to be with them and it'll be kind of hard to give it up at the end but i think you'll grow as a person and then you'll want to be in another group like that Mm -hmm. with people and i think the people that don't fit in they know it and they they want to fit in if they want to fit in they will if they if they don't they they're not going to be successful but I, my advice to anyone who's wanting to get in a show is to go in there wholeheartedly and just give it your all and mm-hmm. and be kind to each other and complimentary and keep everybody's morale up. Yeah, that's really important. Right. Well, what is the biggest audience that you have performed in front of? Well, I used to play in big concert halls of th- thousands of people like bluegrass festivals at oh my the festival of the bluegrass in lexington and we used to sing on big stages in the concert halls and you couldn't really see who was out there but you knew there was a lot of people yeah you can still get a lot from an audience just the feel of it even though you can't see them you know you can feel there. their energy you, you can feel their energy and their and Especially if you know some of your families out there, it really makes a big difference. Yeah. Now these questions are going to be inspired by song titles from The Sound of Music. The first one is, well, the first one's not a song title, but the rest will be. In honor of The Sound of Music and your character, what is your worst habit? Putting myself down, not thinking about myself being, you know, way I look. I don't like the way I look sometimes. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get my picture taken. Mm -hmm. Various things like that. That's one of my worst habits. Okay. So now we do the song titles. If the hills were alive, what do you think they would say to you? Study your lines. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to tell you, some of these que- these questions are a little silly, so I'm glad yeah. you got that. Yeah. How do you solve a problem? Not like Maria, just how do you solve a problem? Think about it a lot and pray about it. Mm, good. That's really, that's really uh, interesting to me because Maria said that she reflects 
and the captain says that he prays. So you combined <laughs> oh, both good. of them. <laughs> that's great. What is one thing that you have confidence in? I have confidence in my singing, and I have confidence in my pitch. Mm-hmm. I have pretty much confidence in that. What is a name that you call yourself? Silly. <laughs> <laughs> How far do you think is a far, far way to run? Any type of running would be far for me. (laughs) (laughs) Me too. Yeah. Can you sew? Yes, I can. I can sew very uh, sparsely, but I can... uh, Well enough. Well enough to do something. (laughs) Tea or soda? Tea. Mm, I like tea as well. Yeah. But I also like soda, so I'd be one of those both. Describe yourself in one word when you were 16 going on 17. Wishful. Mm, That's a good one. What are a few of your favorite things? Gardening. Mm. Flowers. Chocolate. Oh, I like that one. Yeah. Those are a few of my favorite things. Why do you think the goat herd was lonely if he was surrounded by all those people? Because they had to look down all the time. (laughs) (laughs) Slumped over. Can you yodel? Yeah, I can yodel. yodel Yodel-a-hoo. Ooh, that's good. Tell me something good about you. I can cook. You can cook? I can cook when I want to. Okay. What kind of stuff do you cook? Oh, casseroles. Um, I don't do much baking, but Mm. I can make a good mashed potatoes. Oh, mashed potatoes are really good. Yeah. What is your favorite flower? I like zinnias. Oh, that's a good choice. Those are really pretty. Yeah. Would you like to climb a mountain, ford a stream, or follow a rainbow? Follow a rainbow. Mm, That's a good choice, too. If you had to say so long farewell to the life you are living today where would you go you get to take your family but it's sort of like what happened to the von traps they all they have is their family and just the clothes on their back where would you go if you were in that situation i'll go to italy italy oh mm. where would you anywhere specific in italy venice mm, that's somewhere beautiful. around like Lagardia. that's beautiful have you ever been there oh yeah i we have not there. i would yeah. love to go and venice is beautiful what time of year did you go um, it was in July, mm-hmm. toward August. We went there to visit our exchange student. Okay, okay. Have you ever been to the vineyards up there? Oh, yeah. Are they as pretty as I think they are? Oh, yeah. Oh. Well, the vineyards in New in uh, New Orleans are actually beautiful. Have you ever been there? I have not, no. They, they're all along the road as you go to the new, just along on the highway. I mean, you can get your feel of them. All right, I'm down to my final three questions. You have okay. made it. What is your best advice for other actors? Or if you would like to change a little, you could say your best advice to other singers. My best advice to other actors would be to to find out what your part is and what you and to figure out how you want to play it and stick to it and don't veer off of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but first of all, find it. If you have to watch a movie or if you have to read a book to figure it out, just find out what it is and then stick with it. Figure out who they are. Yeah. Mm, That's good. Yeah. Do you have any advice for singers? And singers, just sing. Sing Mm -hmm. as much as you can, any way you can sing it, any any type of... Don't be all thinking that you're just a certain type of music and try to sing all types of music because you'll grow and grow on any type of music. Every type of music has a certain little thing that you do different. You have to be able to not be conformist to certain music you have to be able to open yourself up to other music before you can really soar Mm. and find out what you can really do the the most what would you tell the 10 year old version of yourself if you could go back and talk to yourself at 10 years old i would say work on yourself more try to be more confident uh, study do your work at school Mm -hmm. and just try to do as much as you can with other people and learn and sing more and take some piano lessons oh that's a good one (laughs) all right my last question is if you knew you could do something without fail what would you choose to do i would be a mother and i would be a good grandmother and i would go for my family more and and trying to think about myself and what i could possibly do but Mm -hmm. i do feel like i could have been a singer but being a mother and a, and a wife and a grandmother's really been my joy. So uh, I think I've been doing that, and I'm, and I'm hoping I'm going to be better at it as I get older. All right. Well, thank you very much for being on the show. I really enjoyed it. Well, good. Thank you. Thank you.
Special thanks to Robin Nation. Our final Sound of Music interview will be a video interview with the seven Von Trapp children and will be posted before our final weekend of performances this coming Friday. Very special thanks to the sponsors of The Sound of Music, Eminence McDonald's and United Citizens Bank and Trust. This episode of Getting Real was executive produced, edited, and written by me, Ashley Raymer Brown. It was produced and co-written by me, Free High Shoe. Music was provided by Final Cut Pro, and artwork was created by Ashley Raymer Brown. That's me. And Bree Haishu. That's me. Getting Real is a separate entity from the theater downstream. The thoughts and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not reflect the thoughts and opinions of the theater downstream or the sponsors of their shows. Thanks for listening.